the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as Mormonism or LDS. Welcome to the People of the Free Gift podcast where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to hear our uh, content. Uh, probably at least once a week, mostly more, we upload video having to do with just that topic, cults, and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so let's go ahead and jump in today. I'm going to be talking through uh, my book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, available on Amazon on paperback or Kindle. And today we're going to be covering... Uh, chapter 9, which covers the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And this is, in a way, kind of an update to my most popular video on YouTube, uh, which you'll see at the end screen, um, leading the list of my most popular videos. And I'm going to put a note over there saying I'm doing an update to it. Um, but in that video, I talked about the LDS plan of salvation, because when you and I talk about the gospel, which we covered uh, last week, and I plan on doing a follow-up video to that because there was some good discussion about what is it that makes us a Christian. But in that conversation, we talked about the core doctrines of Christianity. What makes you a Christian is the gospel itself, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, taught in the Bible alone, to the glory of God alone. And that gospel, that Jesus died for our sins, and rose again from the dead after the third day, physically and bodily. That is what we believe, but that is not what Mormonism teaches. And if you've ever seen the diagram, uh, it starts with the pre-existence, that you and I are all literal spirit children of Elohim, which is the name of our Heavenly Father. And he had a Heavenly Father before him, and his Heavenly Father had a Heavenly Father before him that our Heavenly Father became a God through a progression and going through this very same plan of salvation. And he gave birth to us as literal spirit children. And then the firstborn spirit child was named Jesus. And he was chosen as the savior of this world. And he had another brother, spirit brother, who was also our spirit brother, Lucifer. And Lucifer proposed a different plan of salvation. But Jesus was chosen, and that made Lucifer upset. And so Lucifer took a third of us who were spirit children and started a rebellion against our Heavenly Father and against his plan of salvation. So a third sided with Lucifer, and their punishment was that they were cast down to earth without their mortal bodies, and that stunted their progression. They were not able to go through this progression plan we're going to talk about. And then a third stayed neutral. And the LDS Church uh, says it's not official doctrine, but you can find plenty of uh, doctrine. And even in their own scriptures, in the books of Abraham and of Moses, it talks about those who are neutral or were cast down to earth in lesser, uh, lesser realities. Let's just put it that way, put it nicely. And then there was a third that fought valiantly in the pre-existence on the side of Jesus and Elohim. And they were to be born into nice uh, families. And let's just put it that way. And so uh, when we come into this life, uh, we pass through the veil, and so all of our memories of the pre-existence are gone. And then we pass through the veil into this time of mortal probation. And in this time of moral probation, it is our time to prove ourselves worthy to return back to Heavenly Father. And as I mentioned earlier, this is where we get our physical bodies. And that is important because our physical bodies are what is going to allow us to progress onto those levels of Godhood. They believe that God and Jesus have a body, physical body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's. And so uh, we pat go into this time of mortal probation. And during this time of mortal probation, you know, Jesus comes into this earth and he uh, then lives this perfect life. 
And in the process of doing so, then he then dies on a cross. Now, what they believe by what happened on that cross is very different than us. First of all, they believe that it was in the Garden of Gethsemane in which Jesus paid for the sins of the world. But when they say the, he paid for the sins of the world, they don't mean the same thing that you and I do as Christians. They mean that he made it possible for us to make our way back to Heavenly Father. And by his rising again from the dead, he conquered death, and so therefore making it possible for all, all beings to go to a level of heaven. And we'll get to that in a second. And so uh, it's still by our own efforts that we get into a relationship with our Heavenly Father. We have to prove ourselves worthy because it is in the, the very law that we live our life <coughs> will dictate the level of heaven that we go to. And there are certain things that you need to do during this life in order to put yourself in a positive position and set yourself up rightly to be able to go into the highest level of heaven in which they believe that they will become like Heavenly Father. And by becoming like God or becoming joint heirs with Christ, they mean that we will be able to one day have our own spirit children who would then in turn worship us as their Heavenly Father. And we will be their God while still worshiping our Heavenly Father. Okay? And so... Uh, by the type of the types of rituals that you need to participate in is you need to be a part, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. You need to be baptized by a priesthood member within that church, and you need to get a temple recommend, uh, proving yourself worthy to go through the rituals in the temple and to be sealed forever to your families when you are married in the temple um, and go through the endowment ceremonies. And that will allow you to have the knowledge and, uh, and the, the righteousness in order to be able to get into that level of heaven. Okay, so uh, then you have, uh, when you die, you go to paradise or spirit prison. So if you've done all the things that I just talked about and you are keeping your covenants that you made when you did all of those things in baptism, at communion, in the temple, then you will be in paradise, which is kind of the good part of the afterlife. And then if you haven't done those things, you are going to go to spirit prison. And in spirit prison, you still have a chance to have something, somebody do that by proxy. All those things that is mentioned, baptism, being sealed forever as a family. You have somebody on this earth can be baptized in the name of somebody who is deceased and in spirit prison. And then the gospel will be preached to them by missionaries who are in the spirit world. And they will be able to receive the Mormon gospel. They will be able to receive that baptism and that sealing by proxy. And then then be able to go into paradise and then eventually progress on. Now on the day of resurrection, all of us are going to be called forward and we're going to be judged according to the law that we've lived. If we've lived according to celestial law, which basically in all Mormon literature and scripture means that you have become perfect like your father in heaven is perfect, you have kept your covenants, you've done everything we just talked about, then you can progress into the celestial kingdom and eventually become a god like we discussed before. If second level of heaven is called the terrestrial level. And the terrestrial level is a place where most Mormons are going to go to. About 80% or more of Mormons never go through the temple. They never get sealed. They never go through all those things, or they just never reach that point of perfection. And let's just say it that way. I would say 100% of them don't reach that, but let's just say 80%. And so most Mormons and most religious people, Christians, uh, you know, people in different religions, they're going to go there. They're generally moral good people who just haven't had the fullness of the everlasting gospel. 
And so then you have the telestial kingdom, which is the lowest level of heaven. And that is where all the people that we kind of tongue and cheek say they deserve to go to hell. The murderers, liars, thieves, robbers, all those kind of things. Uh, the, the ones who live without law, they are the ones who go to the celestial level of heaven. Okay, but even that, Joseph Smith said that it is so glorious that one would kill themselves right now in order to go there. Okay, so it's still heaven, but the, you, what you need to know is that only Heavenly Father only dwells in the celestial kingdom. And so from a Christian definition of heaven, that's not heaven unless you go to the celestial kingdom, in which I already said most Mormons already know they're not going to go there. Okay, there is one more place called outer darkness. And outer darkness is the place that's reserved specifically for those who have been apostate, meaning you've received the fullness of the everlasting gospel and then you've rejected it. And people have different translate or interpretations of what that means. So I just wanted to go into a few other things that I touch on, and that is the apostasy. What they believe is that Jesus uh, built his church, founded his church while he was on the earth. And uh, he, he gave his priesthood to his apostles. And then after he left, the persecution broke out. And then the apostles started to become persecuted and died, martyred for their faith. And they, had, they died before being able to pass on that priesthood, it is believed. Um, and then scribes who were malicious they then corrupted the scriptures, and so what we have passed on to us in the Bible is said to have had removed plain and precious truths from it. And that is the reason why the Book of Mormon is essential, and then later on, Doctrine and Covenants and Pearl of Great Price, which are their scriptures. You see, the Book of Mormon is said to be a record of ancient Israelites who came over to the Americas, during the time of the exile, and they founded civilizations. There was a good civilization and a bad civilization. The bad civilization eventually killed off all of the good ones. And then uh, Jesus comes shortly after his time here in America, he, or in Israel. He goes over to America. He preaches the Sermon on the Mount, and then people repent and um, the, the Book of Mormon is the record of all of that, and it is untainted, okay? And so the Book of Mormon is on a higher level than the scriptures, than the Bible. And so because of that, they are able to bring in modern day revelation, which either contradicts previous revelation, or it just uh, re helps redefine terms that are familiar to you and I, and then shift them and shape them. And that's where the later revelations brought in this whole thing about becoming God and uh, God having a body of flesh and bones and all of those things. Joseph Smith was a 14-year-old boy who was attending revivals, or he claimed to be attending revivals, and he didn't know which church to join. So he goes out into the wilderness, he prays, and he asks God, which church should I join? And he, he claims that two personages appeared, God the Father and Jesus Christ, both with the body, flesh, and bones, and they tell him not to join any church, but instead that he was going to be the vehicle that they were going to use to restore the church that had been apostate for almost 1,800 years. And so that becomes the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And of course, you can see the whole thing is tainted by salvation, by works, the belief by, in multiple gods, a different view of God, of Jesus, of all of these things. And, uh, but what you need to know more than anything, if you're a Christian and you want to reach out to Mormons, is that they use different definitions for their terminology. And let me explain. Uh, if you, if the average Christian went up to the average Mormon and asked, do you believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead? They would say, yes, absolutely. Amen. But what you need to know is that they mean something different by every single one of those terms. And as we've just talked about, they have different meanings for Adam, atonement, uh, priesthood, baptism, Bible, 
celestial kingdom, church, damnation, Elohim, exaltation, fall, God, Godhead, gospel, heaven, hell, Holy Ghost, and Holy Spirit, Jehovah, Jesus, kingdom of God, marriage, uh, pre-existence, salvation, Satan, and scripture. They mean something different by all of those terms and many more. Um, and if you want more information, of course, you can go to the book. Post your comments down below. I want to know what your questions are, what your thoughts are, even if they're, you know, criticisms. Um, and or I just would love the dialogue with you about these things. And so, uh, like I said, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up, share this video with others. I'm, I'm taking a whole different approach to YouTube and basically I'm recording right now a whole bunch of videos that I'm going to have in the queue and what I'm waiting for is my last release video uh, to reach uh, more views than the previously released video. So I'm going to release a whole slew of videos at once, pick one to market, and then that one I'm going to promote until it gets more views than the previously marketed video. And at that time, then I upload. And the whole time while I'm doing that, I'm recording more videos. I'm doing research on more videos. And so if you want to see more content from me, the best thing that you can do is you can watch my, my recently released videos and then uh, hit the comments, uh, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, share them on social media, and then as soon as it gets over that last hump, then I release the next group of videos. And so I would love for you to be a part of this. I would love to talk with you, discuss with you. And so comments down below, and I'll be checking back to see what you have to say. And until next time, may his power be with you.